16th century, and um, it kind of is emblematic of the status of women composers at that point that we don't even know her first name. Uh, she, her music shows up in a lot of manuscripts of the time period, so it was well known, it was played a lot, um, but she's always referred to just as Mademoiselle Bouquet, just Miss Bouquet. We've done a little uh, research and we found that there were two sisters, there was an Anne and a Marguerite, uh, who were both lute players from the time period and who um, were writing music and hosting concerts. So it may have been one or the other or both of them who were writing this music. Uh, but really fantastic music and um, um, not often performed today, so it's great to have the chance to actually play this. 
on this instrument, uh, which is also not often played today. This is called a Baroque lute. Um, the lute back in Mademoiselle, Mademoiselle Bouquet's day would have looked a little bit different. It wouldn't have had all of these extra strings here. Uh, question that I often get asked are, do I actually play these strings? Well, yes, I do. Uh, this instrument is uh, played like a combination of a guitar and a harp. So all of these notes are, are played. Um, the tuning of the instrument is quite a bit different uh, than a modern guitar, uh, but it's the same idea where I press some notes down with my left hand and pluck them with the right hand, uh, and then I get a whole lot of extra notes down in the, uh, in the lower register. Uh, so this next piece is actually um, is a contemporary piece. This is only the second performance. I, I did the premiere of this uh, two weeks ago at a uh, festival in Louisville, Kentucky. And so you are the uh, second group to hear this, but I think it's a fantastic piece. Uh, it's by a contemporary composer named Oleg uh, Boyko, who is a Ukrainian composer um, and mainly writes for modern instruments, but for some reason he got the idea to write for this thing. <laughs> uh, and so uh, he wrote this place called Murals of Ancient Places, and I've been, I practiced this for a while, and I reached out to him, and I've been asking him about certain things, about, you know, how do you want this passage to go, and all this. And um, at, at some point I said, well, is there anything you'd like me to share about the piece that I can tell an audience about something? He said, no, not really. So he just gave me the, <laughs> just gave me the title. But he said, you know, this is really about my travels around and looking at ancient artwork and um, just seeing these things and trying to depict them in music. But I think he really borrowed an idea uh, from the Russian composer Mussorgsky, who wrote this piece called Pictures at an Exhibition, where in that particular piece, there are, there are many different sections. Each one of them depicts uh, an artwork. And I think this is the same way. We have in here an ancient mural. Uh, and I think this is why he chose to write this for the lute. Uh, it's because there's that conception, you know, that, that association with, with ancient tones and whatnot as well. Uh, but similar to the Mussorgsky piece, you will hear at the beginning, there is kind of a piece of music, a refrain that will come back between all these different sections. I should mention this is kind of a lengthy work, um, but if you listen for this refrain, uh, it, my take on this, although the composer wasn't forthcoming, is that that represents you, the viewer, looking at these murals. And you know, you'll, you'll hear this piece that keeps coming back over and over, and every time it's a little bit changed, um, and in between there you actually get the murals. Um, your guess is as good as mine as far as what murals they might actually be, whether they're famous or whether they're not. Um, but the whole idea is you know, just sort of a little bit of a journey, and at the end uh, we, get in, we get into this uh, final movement, which is what we call a passacaglia, which means that there is a bass line that repeats over and over, and on top of that there are um, really inventive things that happen. So I hope you enjoy this piece. Thank you.
Thank you.
set of variations on a, um, well, it's a set of variations by a late 19th century, early 20th century Spanish composer named Miguel Llobet, uh, who based these variations on a theme by an earlier um, Spanish composer named Fernando Sor, uh, and he published this as a set of variations on a theme by Sor. However, Sor did not write this theme by any means. Many people have written this, have written variations on this. Uh, it's a theme called La Fobia, and you will find all kinds of, there are many guitar versions as well as for other instruments. Uh, Arcangelo Torelli made a famous set of variations on this for violin. Uh, Rachmaninoff even used this, this uh, same theme. So what I'm going to do here is I'll start this piece off, and I will just play you the theme, and the theme is just a chord progression. So a series of chords, and then you can do whatever you want to on top of that. So I'll start off with, uh, with just the La Fobia chord progression. It's the same as, as um, uh, you know, blues player might play a 12-bar blues, or a jazz player might play rhythm changes or something like that. It's the same idea, that you just have a chord progression, you do things with it. Uh, and then uh, the way that Yobet published this piece was that the theme is by Soar, and the first two variations are by Soar, and then the rest of the piece is by um, and it is an encyclopedia of different guitar techniques. It gets kind of crazy with this, this piece, so it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, and thank you all for coming, and I'd like to thank um, Sarah for having me here as well, and um, it's great to see you here today. If you have any questions, by all means, come up. I forgot to mention the most important thing. I have some CDs for sale, so. <laughs> Make sure you see me for those later. Uh, so, anyway, yes, uh, so really great guitar piece, I think. 